Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. Okay, so today marks a very strange, very strange moment in my life. Today has been three months since my nan passed away. Now, my nan is a best friend to me. She is a second mother to me, and she's that life teacher, that person who I always thought would be there. Age never really came into it at all. I always thought that no matter what, my nan would be right beside me. So it came as a huge shock, a huge shock to me, when my nan took a turn for the worst with her health, and she passed away. My nan passed away on the 31st of May. And um, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult. I think about my nan every single day, to be quite honest with you, probably every couple of minutes I think of my nan. There isn't a time where I don't, to be quite honest with you. And I think because I never, ever, ever thought that this time would ever come, I don't really know what to expect. I know my nan's never, ever going to leave me. I know she's always going to be with me. And I look at her pictures and sometimes I find myself in floods of tears. Sometimes I smile. Sometimes I wonder what my nan would say. I wonder how she is and what she's doing. In my heart, in my heart, I know that because of my nan's, my nan had Alzheimer's, but she handled it incredibly, incredibly well. And I suppose I kind of overlooked that actually, even though on the outside that my nan looked amazing and she was incredibly strong and this robust, resilient lady, that actually, that it was, it was, it was around that time where my nan needed to take that next step in her life, but never in a million years did I think that that it would have happened. I never ever would have thought that. I thought that all throughout my life, that age never ever, you never noticed age with my nan. She was an incredibly, incredibly, nan is such an incredibly glamorous lady and always done up to the nines and smart and, and an immaculate lady and the most sweetest, the most loving. Honestly, if you met my nan within five minutes, you felt like you'd known her a lifetime. And just instantly you felt so comfortable around her. She truly did make every single space she was in more happier, more brighter, more wonderful. And I feel so privileged in this life to have her as my grandmother. Now my mum, who is my grandmother's daughter, bear with me, my mum, her mum is my nan, who has such a huge imprint on my heart and on my life and my my mum and my nan were so very very close they were more more rather than mother and daughter it was like best friends to be quite honest with you so I felt privileged that I was a part of that and you know I think that throughout growing up it's my nan was always there from my first operation my nan was there when I went to school, my first days of going to school, my nan was there. She used to collect myself and my twin brother from school. And every sort of momentous thing throughout life when I've been unwell or when something big has happened in my life, whether it be positive, whether it be negative, she's always been there. When I decided what I wanted to do with my career, what I wanted to do with my life, the girl who I was taking to the prom, when I started having hearing problems, when I felt sad, when I felt down, and I felt worried. Nan always got me through. Now in this life, I have been very, very privileged. I have incredible parents. I have an incredible mum and an incredible dad. My mum's mum is my nan, who I'm very, very close to. So in this life, I'm very privileged. I have kind of like three people at the parents' table for me. And and today, it was really lovely because to, to that sort of mark, that sort of moment, that homage to my nan that she is still with us and she's in everything which we do and I know that my nan is always looking down on me but it's three months without her today and I went out with my with my mum and my dad and 
we had a really, really lovely day with walking. We went for a lovely lunch um, in a lovely restaurant and by the coast. It was quite a long drive from where I live and it was just really lovely. It really made me feel really, really quite warm and, and really quite close to my nan, really, because it's um, it reminded me it was very much like what my nan would have enjoyed. So it really, really did um, bring back many, many wonderful memories with my nan. Um, life is very, very difficult. It's extremely, extremely difficult. As I say, I mean, every, every night I pray and I, and I talk about the things on my mind uh, to the Lord above. And I take great comfort from that, that my nan is now with the Lord in Jesus and she is with the other members of my family who I have lost. I struggle still, and I think I will for a very long time, it's only been 12 weeks, I really, really struggle to, to look too far ahead into the future, because even now when I go into stores, or if I go anywhere, like what I've done for all, my whole life, very often I'm very, my mum again is a best friend to me, and I'm very, very close with my dad, but if I'm going anywhere with my mum, if we go into a store or anything which reminds me of my nan, I automatically go into that mode and think, oh, I'll get that, Nan would really, really like that, or she'd like to try this, or that would be really, really nice as a gift for Nan. And then I stop. I was actually, um, I went into our lounge, actually, only about a week ago, and um, my mum was watching a shopping channel. I think it was sort of latter part of the afternoon, and um, something, um, a pink pair of slippers was being shown, and I looked at them, and you know, in, in this split second, all of what had happened with my nan wasn't sort of there with me. And I said to my mum, though nan would really love those. And then I stopped and I thought to myself, what on earth are you saying? You're being absolutely horrific to your mum because she's going through the same thing. And actually, how have you just done that? And I felt dreadful. I absolutely felt dreadful. In fact, I went away and I cried my eyes out, um, which I do very often, to be quite honest with you, because I miss my nan so much. Um, strange very very strange i talk about her all the time i have so many things of my nan's it's um my desk as i'm as i'm filming here um i got a picture of my nan which i showed on the front of of this clip um and it's of my nan smiling and very often if i'm down or if i'm worried or if i'm i'll be honest frightened then i i look at that picture and it brings me great comfort I talk to my mum all the time, I talk to my dad, and I'm incredibly lucky to have them to talk to and to and to turn to and to and to take their experience of life as that sort of comfort to think that yes everything will be okay. And it's and it's just sometimes I don't know, I don't know, it's it's all very, very strange and it's so very, very difficult to deal with, it really is. It, at the moment, it's still incredibly raw, and you know what, I don't think it's ever going to go away. And for one thing, my nan is so, so special to me, I don't think I want it to go away. I don't ever want to stop thinking about her. I had an incredible comment which I received where somebody um, had commented back to me and said that, that what would your nan say if she was sat right with you? And I know exactly what she would say. As a child, and as I was growing up, my nan always said to me, I think the world of you, my love. And although I may never see you grow up, I'll always be with you and I'll always be looking down on you. And you know, when it's a particular like evening, what it is now, you can't see, but it's an amazing, beautiful sunset. And um, I often look at the sky. And I often, and I often, I often look up at the in the clear sky and I often think to myself, you're there now, aren't you? And I know she truly is. And I take a moment of comfort to think that I have that. And I'm so privileged. She hears so many horrific things in this life. And I'm privileged to have that. Number one of those memories and my nan actually being my nan. And then I take great comfort from that I have a huge part of my nan still within my mum. And you know, I'm reminded daily, even just by the expressions of things which my mum says, of even how my mum my looks, they're very, very similar, bless them. And um, 
that same sort of glamorous look, that same sort of outlook on life, that stern sort of nothing will knock me back I'm, to keep going, that willpower, that determination, and that ability to be able to manage everything which is thrown to them and anything which is thrown at them in life. Truly incredible. It really, really is. 12 weeks. No time at all not to lose somebody who means the entire world to you. 12 weeks. 12 weeks. Thank you very much for sharing this clip with me. I wanted to have this sort of mark that, yes, it's horrific that I haven't got my nan now and it's that 12 week mark. But I'm telling myself, like what I said to my nan when I last seen her in the chapel of rest, the day before her funeral, that this isn't the end, we just can't hold hands anymore. Or at least not for a while. And today, I went out and I had a fantastic time with my amazing mum and my amazing dad. And it was really truly special. truly is, isn't it? Sometimes the most precious things in life, and I say it often on my channel, are literally right in front of us. Sometimes they don't have to have huge monetary value, they don't have to cost the earth, just sometimes the smallest of things, or just time taken out of our lives to share with those who mean the world to us. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you for sharing this with me, and until next time, we will see you then. Bye for now.